Greetings, Pats, and welcome to Fly's Flight Academy. My name is Kavakas, otherwise known as Fly Tech once for Tour. And today, we're going to be continuing on with our ship build breakdowns in our bomber category. And today, we're going to be looking at the Sledgehammer, the single best ship in the game. This is not an exaggeration. I'm totally not lying to you. This thing is amazing. Can you hear the sarcasm in my voice? Um, there... This ship is actually amazing. Um, I'm that that I'm not kidding about. Um, I genuinely love this ship. Before I gave it a terrible rap because its entire thing is, for starters, it is the weirdest ship in GSF. Um, its entire thing is it's trying to be a jack of all trades with its components. It's essentially trying to be a strike fighter mixed with a bomber kind of deal um but how but no matter how strange this ship gets it, it it's such an it, it honestly is such an interesting kit and you get some very unique builds out of this thing that you just really can't get out of anywhere else um of note i've i've literally never been able to define what this ship is meant to do because it's just it it's dismantles everything I understand about GSF and just says, here's a ship, have fun. And honestly, I'm totally on board with that mentality. Uh, <laughs> it, it's just, a, it's a blast. Honestly, if you ever, if you ever want to joke around and have just a silly time in GSF, I actually recommend playing this ship, especially since it's the first bomber you get. It's really easy to kit out. Um, that's actually a bit of a lie because its components, I believe its base components are completely different to the ones you end up with, but I'm not completely certain. But even so, it's still really fun. Uh, so starting with its components, its primaries actually have three really solid options. Um, you ever pick between light laser, heavy laser, and quad laser? Of the three, um, I personally think heavy laser is the better one, but it is personal preference because the ship is meant, I sincerely mean this, the ship is just meant for you to have fun. So what I'm going to tell you is I'm going to tell you the tier four and tier five for every single one of these, and I'm going to let you go out into the wild and just have fun. Um, this being the last ship breakdown as well is perfect because this is the silliest ship I can possibly break down for you. Um, there's, there's no... Honestly, the meta build for this is technically what I have here, and even this looks really goofy on paper. So, have fun with this ship, honestly. Pick whichever one you want. If you're running light laser, uh, improve firing or tracking, improve hull. If you're running heavy laser, ignore armor, shield piercing. If you're running quad lasers, I really, really want to recommend crit but I can't in good faith. So uh, reduce power cost and improve increase hull damage. It's going to get you pretty far in life. Of note, um, I think that they messed up, man. Quad lasers, they, they had the potential to make this thing look like an old B-Wing and put two quad lasers and then put like, or to, put, or to even make it look, I don't know, like more like a bounty hunter ship and put the two quad lasers on like the bottom or something. But they just put one right here on the wing, unlike heavy laser, where there's one on the wing, and then there's one right down there on the bottom. I don't know why they couldn't do the same thing for the other one. And then light laser just shoot out here. But all three are super fun. I personally like heavy laser because it's, I think the ship is meant as a burst ship, I, but it doesn't have a play style. So just pick what you want, you'll like it. Uh, for secondaries, you have two fairly okay options. Um, I'm going to say protons are just strictly the best option here, especially since efficient targeting is pre uh, present. I Again, I don't know what's going on down here. I don't know what's going on up here. I don't know what's going on down here. Just everything's weird, and I love it. Um, but proton, proton torpedoes in particular, uh, they are the strongest for the pseudo strike fighter bomber bonanza this thing has going on so protons are just perfectly fitting with what i believe that the ship encapsulates encapsulates um 
these have very long range at that 11 that 11 5 that has been staple for its ranges for all of time and has very high burst and this ship likes it um it's kind of the gist of it uh concussion miss moving on to concussion miss oh sorry tier four tier five uh increased firing arc and increased range these two um pretty much staple to the proton torpedo so run it and it'll get you for real far and far and away with these uh of note these have an increase i want to say these actually have an increased ammo pool uh i lied i have kira these have they still have an increased ammo pool so you're actually getting more shots with these i think that's just innate to bombers then that's kind of cool so you have 16 shots with these, which actually helps you out. Uh, of note, you don't actually have a repair probe, so uh, you hope someone else does. <laughs> Moving on to your second option, uh, concussion missiles. These are an interesting, interesting case on this ship. Um, they're not bad, but because you're still a bomber, you're slow enough to where it's you're going to find it real hard to stay in range long enough to actually complete most of your locks. But in saying that, it's still good enough damage to just get you to get you far, and it'll still work well with most of your kit, uh, namely the Sentry Drone. If you do pick this option, um, do know it's uh, you'll be running increased range for Tier 4, and at Tier 5, ignore armor. Uh, do note it's 7700 range which is a significant leap from Proton to this. I'm going to say right now, by the way, never run cluster missiles. It's a terrible idea. Trust me, I've tried it. It's the worst. Uh, well, concussion missiles and Proton are fairly solid. Uh, of the two, I'd say Proton is probably the better of the two. Moving on to systems. Uh, man, this is, where I this is where I really struggled to make heads or tails of what the ship is actually meant to do. Um, so in this category, we have two mines, an EMP field, and the Interdiction Sentry Drone. If you, if you can sit there and tell me what this is meant to be for, I, genuinely, I will praise you. <laughs> because none of this is, none of this at all is cohesive. Um, so in the order that I'm going to be describing these, I'm going to go Interdiction first, then Concussion. And then EMP field, and then ion mine. Um, actually, you know what? I'll just preface right now. I'm not actually covering the ion mine because there's literally no situation where these are actually useful to this ship. They're not even useful on the rampart where they where they should be useful. So don't run these. Unfortunately, they unfortunately they are too silly for this ship. Yes, that's right. They're they're too bad for, for this ship. So that's a shame. But starting with something that's actually good for this ship, uh, the Introduction Sentry Drone. I actually am in the belief that this is one of the best choices for the kind of loose def point defender that you can achieve with the Sledgehammer. However, um, past me that wrote these notes didn't experience what current me experienced in the sense that I have learned that combat dropping an interdiction sentry drone mid-fight is probably the funniest thing you can do to someone because there's zero they can do about it and there's everything you can do to make them feel terrible. So by all means, um I actually I recommend playing this with these more aggressively than a point defender would. Um please spend all your time putting an interdiction on top of someone and watching them struggle to turn around to kill it. Um, that's really all I have to say about it. I, I wrote a bunch of old notes, but honestly, future me finds more joy in using sentry drones aggressively than the passive nonsense I wrote beforehand. Uh, so for tier 4 and tier 5, you're going to want to run increased interdiction effect. This will increase the slow from 40% to 50%, making it absolutely crippling and world-shattering for enemies. Um, 
in saying what I just said, uh, there are two choices at tier five that you kind of need to keep in mind. If you are combat dropping interdictions on people, you're actually going to want to take the, the fortified drone to just kind of help it survive while it's doing its thing on keeping its and keeping your enemy slow. Uh, realistically, you're only ever going to have one out in this playstyle because every fight you're essentially going to be throwing out another one. If you are running the kind of pseudo aggressive point defender, you are, uh, I honestly recommend taking two drones. This lets you place one on the point and then use one aggressively. Uh, that way your team can still benefit from having a drone and you can benefit from having a movable slow. Moving on to option number two, the concussion mines. And I have used these like a grand total of three times, and every single time it's been it's been a weird one. Um I I actually do recommend if you're going to run these, I actually recommend you pairing them with the concussion missile. I know that's that sounds like I'm trying to make a joke here and trying to run a double concussion build, but that's not what I'm doing. Um Genuinely speaking, because these both have such high damage values and they both have shield piercing, you are shield piercing enough to where you're able to actually just straight up burst someone if you're if you're placing these mines smartly. Um, that said, you are converting the sledgehammer with this build into a midpoint defender. Um, what that means is you are... You're you're definitely not the primary point defender with this, uh, no matter what. Any a rampart or a work area will do a better job. But you are placing your mines a lot more aggressively and in kind of weirder places to essentially like super burst someone and then just whip around a corner or something and then hit him with a concussion missile. And the burst from like two of these going, two of the mines going off, and then the missile will straight up one shot someone. So it's actually incredibly viable in the right scenarios. Uh, that said, you have kind of two options here. Because you're not really a primary point defender, you don't need three of these mines, but you can still pick up three if you really feel like if you really feel like you can get away with it. Uh, otherwise, the increased radius is actually not terrible. Uh, pushing it out to 2,000 meter detonation range is pretty okay. Uh, it just lets you place these a little more creatively and still get the uh, still get the damage to go off, kind of around corners and stuff like that. At tier five, however, you are always going to be picking up increased hull damage. Uh, this aids in the shield piercing to deal more damage directly to the hull. And overall, it's actually a very solid burst option with the concussion missile. Uh, moving on to the EMP field. Um, man, for a while, uh, I actually struggled to see a point to this actually being on the ship. And honestly, with the limited testing I did with it and kind of the me sitting here contemplating everything I know about GSF. I came to the conclusion that the developer said, you know what? Why not? And just threw it on here. <laughs> because it really does nothing. <laughs> um, it's, man, it's not terrible as a second. Okay, so this is, explaining this is weird. Um, the EMP is actually not terrible as a second wave point taker what this means is the essentially after your scouts and strikes push point that's the since you're slower um you're obviously going to come later but as you show up um <clears throat> you're going to be using the emp to essentially disrupt the point itself and make enemies essentially vulnerable to your teammates by shutting their engines down and doing and actually making your this is the one time the invulnerability at tier four is going to actually help benefit your team because you're using it in this way um 
unlike the the Nova knife, where you're using it to disable single targets and you're using it to pick people, you're using this to affect a broader area. You're essentially going in to tank and then EMP fielding when you have the most people in your range. And as a result of this, um, as I said, all the EMP effects will happen. You'll suppress them. Their assistance will be down. Um, your evasion will increase, which isn't super important. One thing that actually is super important, this is the one time this will ever come in handy on the EMP, is the sensor communication range reduction by 5,000 meters. This will actually mean that any, any ships that are coming towards a point won't know how many allies or how many allies you have on the point and will only know how many were there. So if your team suddenly brings in more more teammates to defend a point, the al or the enemies are essentially going in blind because their allies are no longer communicating to them from their ranges. Uh, also, the, your, the allies will have uh, accuracy reduction, which is kind of cool, and any enemy bombers, their mines will be disabled, as well as their drones. So this does a lot of crazy defensive stuff for, uh, for your team. And at tier 4, when you get the missile lock immunity, you're actually helping you and three allies uh, just straight up be immune to missile locks for a good three seconds. This, With communication, this can be extremely cool. Even without communication, this is helping three people just not have to deal with missiles for a couple seconds, which is kind of nice. So overall, EMP is... Man, it's, it's not terrible, but it's just... It feels like they really just slapped it on because just why not? Why not, man? The sledgehammer's it's got it's got all the stuff. You want EMPs? You got it. So here it is. Um, moving swiftly on because I'm not talking about ion mines because they're terrible. Your shield choices. You have one. Uh, <laughs> directional shield sucks on this because you're too slow to actually to stop enemies from just straight up shooting behind you or whichever way your shield isn't facing. And charge plating is a relic of the old damage reduction meta, so overcharge shield. Um, this is not at all terrible for you. Uh, it's increasing your shield capacity by a lot more than 18% at tier 3. It's actually 27% at tier 3? Yeah. So at base, 18% at tier 3, 27 it might even be more. No, okay. Um, it's 25 or 27 percent for 15 seconds, and it actually instantly boosts up your uh, shield power by 20 percent. It also has decent, actually has really good stats. It gives you 60 percent extra shield power um, while reducing your regen rates, which kind of sucks, but it's not the end of the world. And at tier 2, uh, you get another 10% power pool increase, giving you a grand total of 70% extra power, uh, shield power, which brings this up to 2850 per arc, which is nothing to scoff at. I'm pretty sure it's the largest in the game. Oh yeah, it's the largest in the game, meaning this thing is a beefcake. <laughs> it, it's got all the shields, so... Um, not in also including large reactor, which is another 20%. So you're realistically getting like, and what is that? 90% extra shields from base, um, plus your crew. So you're getting a lot of shields. It's nice. Um, also, uh, the shield power goes up from 30% or 20%. The instant shield heal goes from 20 to 30% at tier 3. I forgot to mention that. And moving on to the final thing for this, the engines, you have, once again, one option. Um, because of the way the ship plays out, Power Dive is actually your best choice. Uh, I am much in disagreement with this being here. I kind of wish it was any other engine option. I mean, even Retro Thrusters would have been hilarious. But Power Dive's okay. It's just a learning curve. Um... It being your only missile lock is or missile lock break outside of EMP is or, or it, um, 
the odds of you actually needing one to survive are fairly low. So uh, with that, just kind of get used to power dive, and you'll be a sledgehammer main in no time. Uh, for tier 3, you're going to run increased turning rate, just like every other ship. And that is all for our wonderful sledgehammery boy. For all that is good and holy, please at least play this ship like twice. Uh, <laughs> and but and when I say play it, I mean don't play it at all until you've maxed out its it, whatever loadout you want to try, and then play it and tell me your, and tell me how much fun you've had. Comments are open, always, and I really want to know how much chaos I've created by unleashing the sledgehammer crew upon the peoples. I, I sincerely. In, in the truest fashion, find nothing but pure joy out of this ship because it is the silliest thing I've ever played with in my life. And I've played some, some weird loadouts, man. Like, this and the Flashfire Chainsaw build are pretty close, but I have to give this the edge because it's just, it's so goofy. Like, what is, none of this screams cohesive, but it's, like, so good together that it just, it, mm. It's the best, and I love it. It also, in my opinion, is actually one of the coolest looking ships in the game. I mean, I'm a su I'm a real sucker for the T design, and just the way it's laid out is neat. I just I kind of wish, like I said, with the quad lasers, they just doubled up, or even made it like the Slave One, where it just both on the bottom or something. Man, you did me dirty with the quad lasers, only putting two right here disappointed. It's the only reason to run heavy lasers is it does this. <laughs> Quad lasers would be significantly significantly better for this ship, but who cares? Uh, that said, this is the final breakdown video. Uh, as such, we are nearing the end of my beginner tutorial guide. The last and final thing I'm going to go over in the next video is essentially going to be talking about the loadout. I'm going to try and keep it fairly short, as there's not really much to talk about there. Um, it's I'm really just going to be kind of going through the list of chips and pointing out what realistically should be should be like a staple. Um, generally speaking, there's there's not there's not too much to worry about. Um, a lot of a lot of GSF really is personal preference, so that video is probably going to be like 15 minutes or something. I don't even think I can even squeeze 15 minutes out of that. It's probably going to be something really short. Um, that said, though, there's going to be that one last video, and that'll be it for the beginner tutorials. And if you guys want to see some form of slightly more advanced stuff, I genuinely... Um, I'm more of a practice-to-get-better kind of teacher guy. I sincerely believe that with all the knowledge that I've thrown at you, if you just kind of take the time to play the game, I believe you will do it a lot better. But if you guys want to potentially see stuff like that, um, I'll attempt to find something. There's not too much left to teach, realistically speaking. Everything after, everything after the loadout explanation it becomes a lot more pointed and narrow um like the accuracy and evasion stuff a lot of it comes down to math and how the game registers what it, what they're doing to each other and it's just a lot of meh like there's there's not too much in the way of that i can teach after this that will honestly benefit you and GSF. So I'm going to do the final uh, loadout video, kind of going over how you should get out your loadout. And that'll be it. But for now, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the skies.